as a rule, if you have testis cancer and it's located to the testis only, and the testis is removed, and the blood tests and the CT scan suggest the cancer has not spread, under those circumstances, surgery alone is enough. If there's any indication that the cancer has spread to any other part of the body, and we can do that with a CT scan and with blood tests, under those circumstances, we give chemotherapy. So when I was told that I was going to have chemotherapy, it was one of the worst things that I could have been told because I didn't want to have it. I didn't want to lose my hair, I didn't want to be sick, I didn't want to be ill. You need this treatment in order to be more confident that testicular cancer is not going to come back in future. Um, but it involves getting your head around the idea that actually for the short, time, short term you're going to feel a bit worse actually. Chemotherapy has been around for 20 or 30 years. Chemotherapy is used widely in testis cancer and chemotherapy cures patients with testis cancer, unlike the majority of cancers. The exact reason why it cures, why, chemo, why testis cancer is so exquisitely sensitive to chemotherapy, we simply don't know. But what we do know is that if you give specific combinations of drugs to patients, cisplatin, bleomycin and atopicide, particularly those three, you tend to get excellent results. So two weeks after the operation, I started chemotherapy and I, I had an initial consultation with the oncologist who taught me through the process and what was going to go on and then told me to uh, come into the clinic on the Monday morning where I would start my first chemotherapy session. And he advised me that I needed four, four cycles of chemotherapy, which is effectively 12 weeks overall. Um, and at, each end of each, at the end of each cycle, he had reassessed my progress and would do additional CT scans to see how I was getting on um, with the purposes of obviously trying to shrink the, the cancer that was inside of my, my abdomen and also on my lungs. The way they work is either by binding to the DNA, stopping cancer cells turning over, or directly targeting cancer cells and killing them. And effectively, the cancer cells get confused by the chemotherapy and they go into something called apoptosis which is they program themselves to die. It involved going into hospital um, for um, three to four days and being constantly on a drip where the chemicals are um, being fed into your body. Um, at the beginning you feel okay but by the end of the, the fourth day um, you feel begin to feel pretty rotten. If I'm honest, I think I had I had it easy to some extent. I know some patients, you know, they they start to feel very sick and they are affected by the chemotherapy. For me, I was more worried about you know personal appearance and weight and hair issues and those sort of things. The chemotherapy process is one from start to the last cycle of drug and the normal scan is in the in, is in the region of months. You know, you can expect to be going through a period of therapy for about four months. And then I guess after the first three weeks of chemotherapy, I lost my hair and I started suffering from a bit of nausea um, and my fingers and my ears, actually. I had problems with, uh, with tinnitus in my ears, uh, which is a result of some of the drugs that they give you in chemotherapy, and my fingers started to feel numb. So actually it's very intensive and not many of my patients are able to go and, uh, and have a normal life. People feel tired while they're on chemotherapy. They often get a sore mouth, sore feet, predisposed to infections. And I remember just not having any energy and not having any concentration I found it difficult to eat my dinner. Just I couldn't sit at the table for more than a couple of minutes at end because I just didn't have the concentration. Um, I didn't even have enough energy to wash myself. I was just so drained, I was just so tired, I just didn't have any energy to do that. And I remember sitting there telling my dad, I just don't think I can go through another course. I just don't want to do it. The risks associated with chemotherapy are very, very small and the benefits are very, very large. In the 1970s, almost everyone who developed testis cancer where it spread to other areas died from it. And at the moment, we're curing 90, 95% of patients. So the results have been outstanding but let's not forget that there are side effects associated with the drugs that we give. It was a really, really difficult time, but then I know that it was what I needed to fight the cancer. So for everything there was bad, there was eventually light at the end of the tunnel. I tell patients to look at the chemotherapy period as the priority in their lives and look at other things in their lives while they're on chemotherapy during that three or four months of bonus in the knowledge that we cure the vast majority of young men who can then go on and lead a normal life into their 80s.